Yeah, not not to name names. Man, yeah. Get hell with that. I've been with like at least five programs, bro, and I've been I've been trying to trade properly for a while now. Like I tried it last year and I gave up because it was just overly overwhelming that at I when I was at IML, it's like, oh, we want you to market this, market that. I'm not a marketer, dude. That's not what I do. You, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to recruit other people. That's, that's not what I do. And, you know, I gave up and I came back in it this past June and pretty much was repeating the same thing again. You know what I mean? And this may be, this is the most money I've ever made trading in the eight months that I've been at it. Eight months of trading, that's cool, man. Yeah, that's the most, dude. Like I blew I've blown a lot of accounts, man. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of accounts. You know, a lot of paychecks went down the drain. A lot of the time the wife cussed me out saying it's gambling. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So right now, you know, this is the best system I've I've came across, you know, even though I'm still trying to find my own strategy a little bit, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you made 2,500 in two days, and so you, whatever you said, whatever you did to make 2,500, there's always, there's always, there's always gonna be weeks like that where, where you're gonna make more. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I was only really shooting to make like 1,500 because I didn't want to like over trade you know what i mean yeah. like i don't you know i don't want to get greedy and get superly excited like oh yeah i got this down back and then boom your account blowing out you know you trying to take out more uh trying to take out more uh trades on a thursday which i'm highly against you know if you don't have a trade already open on a thursday yeah. you shouldn't do it you know really? especially during the new york session i don't want to do that you know yeah, uh, and um, I just think the London session is really working for me right now. So that's the you know because that's the time I'm going to bed at most of the time. So you know, and I'm in, but yeah, man, you no, know, it's the most I ever made, man. I'm just like wow. You know? But yeah, man, I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing, man. Just to be consistent, you know, be practicing. And even though I'm practicing with my real money now, you know, <laughs> <laughs> practicing with real money. Yeah, somebody asked me if that was demo. I said, man, these bills I got coming in, they're not demo. So, you know, I gotta kind of do it now, you know. So, you know, my bills are not demo, man. <laughs> you know, no, real money. Real money, man. You gotta pay real money. Yeah. You know. um, what, what you think about gold, man? I haven't been touching gold at all. You know, I just uh, leaving it alone. I have, yeah, uh, I know. I know. I didn't send out signals for gold this week, but I mean, I was buying gold from Sunday. Oh, okay. Um, and I didn't want to jeopardize anybody on gold because because you know, there were times that we got killed on gold because gold would do a major. Yeah. Man. Gold was wiping me out. And by looking at gold on 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 the daily or, or the four hour or let's see what I'll see you know. No, no, the weekly is good. The weekly can what I expected it to be. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's the horn, man. Um, <laughs> no. Yeah, my fault, man. And, I, yeah. they, they drive crazy down here in Charlotte, bro. I'm, they do? Yes. Oh. Everybody from New York, okay? Because originally, you know, I'm from Panama, but I grew up in New York, you know? So yeah. everybody, they run away from New York, you know, they come to the South and they bring in the New York bullshit with them, yeah. driving like shit, you know? And this is it right here. So Charlotte and Atlanta is a growing city, so, you know, it's pretty much New York all over again. You know, might have to move to Texas or something. I don't know. But yeah, man, I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it, but you know, because I was losing so much money, 
yeah. I'm not sure if I really want to like touch it. You know, I have to really, really, really like pay attention to the, the U.S. dollar index. You know, to have an idea of what gold gold is trying to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, um, I mean, it, yeah. it, just because you, it, it, the reason I said that is because you know, you know, like if you like you said, you you said it yourself. You know, if uh, the U.S. dollar is going down, you know. You know, it's uh, the opposite of gold is doing the opposite. But sometimes that's not the case. <coughs> Whoa. Shoot. All right. Yeah. Um, gold, like I say, gold has a mind of its own sometimes. Yeah. And if you were, if you bought gold at the beginning, like, you bought gold at the, at the beginning, let me show the weekly chart. This is what I was expecting for it to be on the, on the weekly chart. So this is the beginning of the price. Oh, it was like 1197 or where it was. And now it's at 1205. So if you if I bought it at the very beginning, I held it through. Oh, not a lot of movement going on. Right. All right. So it's not it's not enough, it's not enough market structure. Because if we were to go back to the four hour for gold, you can see that gold has been ranging. Yeah. So gold has been ranging, and it's like, man, what would I do? Because if I zoom out, if I zoom out on gold, I mean, gold just gold hasn't broken this high, and gold hasn't come back to break this this low here, and it's just been stuck in between here ever since. I mean, if, if you look at yeah. the beginning of September and up until now, it's just been range in here quite a bit so it, it's a pretty good structure to scalp gold yeah i'm not gonna do that <laughs> yeah i mean it's a good structure yeah. to scalp but no. you know um well, what, what's, the, what's that guy name uh kenneth i don't i haven't heard from him in a while oh yeah he left the group i'll just be honest <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. You know, yeah, he was the king of scalping, man. I'm not a, I'm not, a, I'm not a scalper. You know, that's not, yeah, not really for me. You know? Yeah, I used to like, I used to like scalping a lot. I used to really like scalping a lot. Yeah. And when I lost 17k in five seconds, that was not fun. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no shit. Seventeen eight. Yep, that was not fun. I put twenty, yeah, put twenty standards, fifteen standards, twelve standards, ten. Oh standards. my god, man, you making my chest hurt, bro. Hi guys. I was, I was all about it. I was Hi, all about it. Uh, for for now for our payroll. Oh yeah, NFB, yeah, man. Yeah, I, I've, I've lost, I've lost like maybe like seven grand last year. You know, trading NFB, and I really shouldn't be trading. You know, I didn't really know what the hell I was doing. You know, yeah. For a long time, I didn't know what I was doing, honestly. You know, and it's you know, it's just you know, everything doesn't work for everybody, right? And, um, yeah, I mean. I don't want to uh, yeah, I, all, I just put all the trades in right away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, you know, what, what do you, what, the way you do it is, is, you know, it's it's good. You know, you know, you get in right at at the, uh, you know, um, where, wherever price is, you know. But you know, like I, you know, I was telling you my situation. You know, if I. If I'm expecting a breakout, I'm setting like my, you know, my entry price above the consolidation. You know what I'm saying during the Tokyo session, because that's pretty much, you know, a lot of the pairs they don't. Being that it's not a lot of movement going on during those sessions, you know what I mean. You know, if I'm expecting a pair to shoot up, you know, I'm, I'm setting the entry above, you know, um, above uh like you know. Consolidation or uh, looking for, 
you know, it's hard to explain how I break this down. I'm not really a good teacher, like, you know, like you, you know. Okay, <laughs> what? Good, I, you know, I, I say I'm not a good teacher like you, you know, like me, you know, I, I like if I look on the chart, I can like, you know, know what to do, you know, but I can't really explain how I do it. Like, you know, it's like if I'm entering a trade that I'm, I'm going to sleep, you know, and I'm, if it's t- say the say it's moving side to side on a on the um on the four hour candle, yeah, candle, I go down from the four hour to the hourly candle, and then I go back to the four hour candle. Then I then I set up my entry point off the four hour candle, you know, to have a uh, you know have an idea of what I'm doing, you know, and just to watch the trend, see where the trend is going. You know, do a little bit of reading, you know, see what's going on on uh, investing.com, you know, and um, set my entry point above like a consolidation range if I'm buying or below if I'm selling, you know, where I'm expecting a breakout, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I didn't know how to explain things last year, especially yeah. when I was making my YouTube videos, like. I didn't know, like, I was saying lots as, like, money, like, pennies and dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't know, like, I didn't know the correct terms and definitions for, you know, for for, uh, for Forex. But along the way, you're going to find, you know, you're going to find out the terms. I mean, you, you don't know, you know, you're going to know your, your uh, how do I want to say, uh, Here's the thing. I want to say this. It doesn't matter. How, it doesn't matter how good you are at reading the book of forex, because it yeah. comes down. It comes down to the trading of forex. Yeah, that's true. And when was it? Go? And when when I was flipping that account, mm-hmm. I went out. Like I said. If you if you watched that previous video, I mean my first video where I said when I flipped from three fifty to twenty six thousand, I didn't know. I mean I didn't know jack shit about what what uh, about terms. Yo man, you look so stressed out in that video. Yeah, I didn't even know what I was talking about. Like I was just talking about like you know I did this and did that. You know? Yeah. So I didn't know I didn't know what what was you know I was just blurring out words, but but I mean I took the time to. Uh, on the, on the weekends to read up on okay, what is this? What is this called? And and what exactly you know what exactly uh, uh, okay, what exactly is the structure behind that? Right. So I mean, do you have to know every every single piece of information to trade forex? No. No. If you. Like I said, if you take the time to to dive in and I don't want to say this. I don't really want any I don't I don't want anybody to like keep blowing accounts, but I mean that's what I did to learn to, to, yeah. not, to not blow accounts, but but eventually say when you when you blow so many accounts, I don't care if it's demo or or uh, or live. You 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 find something that's gonna start working out for you, and then you like okay, I'm gonna keep this. Like I said, what I said in my previous webinars, you keep that because that's your strength of, of winning. Right. You're always gonna have those winning trades all the time, and you have something to fall back onto no matter what happens. And that's yeah. the most important thing is if you don't have something to fall back onto, then. You're just gonna be yeah. second guessing when when the market <laughs> and you, you can't be second guessing all the time. Man. You're gonna hey be- man, you know my birthday is September eighth, like you man. I second guess a lot of stuff, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like you know, like 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 yesterday, man. You know, I was really like starting to feel like stressed out because I'm like, okay, so they say. This is what they're expecting. Why do I think they're bullshitting me, man? You know what I mean? I don't know. You know, but you know that 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 that, that comes with, with you know you know being grounded, man. You know what I'm saying? Like 
you know, overthinking, you know, overanalyzing is like paralysis, you know? I'm with you. Yeah. So, and, but, you know, if, you know, I, I, you know, when people ask me about it, you know, I just tell them, like, yo, don't risk your real money as of yet until you understand that um, the basic concept and the basic fundamentals, man, don't do. I, I don't tell a lot of people my business like that, but I've lost a lot of money, you know? Yeah. You know, so, you know, I just say practice and, you know, find a system that works. You know, find a system that you can piggyback off from, you know, and impl- imply, like, your own strategies and stuff, you know? You know, you can't really, sometimes you can't really follow somebody. A hundred percent to the T, you know, that doesn't always work like that, you know. Uh, yeah, there is, like I said, there's a lot of systems out there, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of great methods, but if you, if you look at every single, I don't know how say this, you and me could look at something totally different on the chart. But we could come out to the same outcome. Yeah. Of that chart, and have the same, like I said, the same, uh, uh, the same reasoning behind why we would sell and why we would buy. But then we would look at it totally different. And with that is, you know, that that's that's the mentality, the mindset behind that trader, because they see something, whether they're going to buy or sell, and whether they're going to swing or scalp that that position. Yeah. And then from there, even from there, you start figuring out like, like there are some people that know that 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 can just look at my signals and say, oh, I know, I know what Ku's doing on the signals. And then there are some that just look at signals and don't know what and don't have a clue what what signals are, and that and that's fine. But but you're gonna find something. You know, whether it's from me or from reading a book or from yeah. yourself, and, and it all comes and it all just comes in, and then you're like, oh wow, okay, this is it. This is something that I just found. I'm gonna will make sure I don't not I don't lose this because this is this is what's been making me a lot of money. Right. So. Because you know, even even when I take even when I take your signals, you know, I still have to do like a little bit of homework. You know, like okay. You know, I want to know why you say, you know, you know, you're going to sell this and you're going to buy that. You know, I can't just, you, you know, it's not that I don't trust you, you know, and don't think you don't know what you're doing. You know what I mean? I have to, like, you know, um, give my own confirmation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I need to know why, you know, you know, you're, you're doing something, you know? So... You know, I, I I must see like you know, you know uh, and that's and that and that, I think that's another thing you know, you know sometimes you know, might have to like tell people like hey you know maybe you know you can either you know check out why I'm doing what I'm doing or you can just go right with it you know it's up to you guys but you know I I would always suggest that you know for your own safety and understanding you know you should always um like find out why somebody doing something you know yeah and just jump and go with it you know what i'm saying uh, but Hey man, I gotta leave you guys, man. I'm going to an inspection right now to uh, some these state troopers and stuff. So uh, if anything, I probably, you know, um, you gonna do a lot at Tokyo session later today? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll do. It. All right. Um, I'll be back around that time. Take care, man. All right, bro. Yo, Anthony. Yo. 
Yeah, I, I had a question about uh, the, the auto trader because I saw you can uh, do like three uh, different uh, ways to do the risk management, let's say that. Yep. Um, but still, what, what would you like suggest uh, to take what kind of minimum amount and stuff like that? Yeah, because it's difficult, of course. But yeah, yeah, it, it's difficult now because I'm trading on. What is it about down to? I know, yeah, thirty, thirty, yeah, thirty-four thousand right now on the account. So it's kind of tough because some people will really start. Some people that start with less than a thousand or even just a thousand, and I'm trading on a thirty thousand dollar account. It gets it gets really tricky. So you have to adjust your risk settings to like really, really, like really low, like less than less than thirty, less than twenty percent. But yeah, but the thing about what I thought because um, I know um, most of the times you, you don't use a stop loss, right? I don't use yeah, like I said, yeah, I don't use any stop loss. Yeah. On all trades. But the, The, the thing what I think is from if if you do it you have to do it like exactly how you do it because otherwise uh if the stop stop loss will hit you or something like that with your uh money management risk management uh, and, um, you, when I put a trade in let's just say let's just say we're gonna sell we're gonna sell euro right now if i if I put a trade in right now there you can't modify the trade. And only I can modify the trade by adding a stop loss or a take profit. And you can close the trade if you feel like it, or I can close the trade when I when I'm when I'm closing it. Yeah. So you have you still have access to, to uh, the live account. Uh, you can add positions if you want. You just gotta be careful because if you're on a really a really low balance or a really low deposit, then If, if you can be fully margin out and I know guys that got margin out and got and got their accounts blown up because they only put up they only put like 500 they only put 400 there are some that come in and put like 50 bucks which is not there's there's no point because you trade like you have like 10 accounts right 10 master accounts no 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 I only have the one ma I only have the one master I used to have three of them but I cut the other two off okay Because, yeah, I still don't quite get it. Let's say if I, uh, even if I do like 3,000, that's like 10 times less than what you do. Right. So when you're going to add positions, uh, my account wouldn't be able to handle it. And, and if it can, like, you know, it automatically uh, does the risk in the percentage. But the yeah. problem is going to be the, the stop losses are going to be really tight. Right. Uh, I, like I said, I don't use stop loss, but if you put stop loss, if you, you, you can't, you know, yeah, you can't modify the trades that I put in. Oh yeah. I, I thought it would do oh. it automatically because with the mirror ma master risk, you know, you can risk or does it just expose that much of the account? Or something? It's just, yeah. It's just how much you want to expose the account. Oh, so there's capital to risk. Uh, there's, yeah, there's that mirror risk. Uh, you can do fit, fixed lot sizes. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter if, if I open one standard and you have a fixed lot size, oh, yeah. 0.01, yeah. they'll always do 0.01. It don't matter. Yeah. It don't matter what, what lot size I open because you have a fixed lot size set up. Yeah. Um, what else? Because I, I see a lot of screenshots that you do like uh, one lot size as well, uh, a, a zero, uh, zero one. Yeah. Lot size. But is that, is that also on that master account where you do the the trade with, or do you do higher uh, lots on that one? There are times I do five ten standards, but yeah. that's if your account can handle five ten standards. Now, if you have, if you have a thousand dollars and I'm trading thirty thousand dollar account I do five standards you're 
it's not going to open up the trade because yeah. you don't have enough leverage or and and um equity to open it up. Yeah, yeah. So it wouldn't matter if I. It don't matter. I done I done five ten standards, but none none of the other accounts open up the standards because they don't have enough to cover that. Yeah. So. So the best best way to do it is if you have like exact uh, same account as you, or just say if hey, I do I only do uh, zero one uh, lot size max. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there are guys that risk the whole account because they want they want to aggressively grow their account. Now, you can. But but then but then there is always that where you can lose the account uh, the next day or or at the end of the week or 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 in less than five minutes of trading. Yeah. So you know I mean if you want to put if you put if you put a thousand in and you don't adjust your risk settings, you you can lose your you can lose a thousand in one day or less than a day. Yeah. If you if you match me and say that oh hey I'm gonna put thirty thousand in, then then yeah you're not then basically I'm then we have, we we're comparing the same account so whatever I open we can do the same thing, and then whatever yeah. whatever I make you're making the same thing now the the way you'll make more the way you'll make more is if you if you uh, increase your risk yeah your risk multiplier. Yeah. So let, let, let's say if I put sixty thousand, then I can say I do twice the amount of uh, lots that you do. Yeah, you can do a lot. Yeah, you can do yeah, double, triple the, the lot size. Yeah. Okay, I was curious about that part of, and I, I see you know you see a lot of those uh, 10, 10 pips a day challenges, but. It sounds that easy, you know, oh, just 10 pips and yeah, everybody can get 10 pips a day. But I think the trick is do, yeah, your, your, your money uh, risk management because most of the times I don't get it off the first trade I add. It's maybe I lose two and then the third will cover everything, you know? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, yeah. So what's, what's like a good risk management and... Okay, I know the opening of uh, even like your box says you, we probably have to scalp it. So on the opening on London and uh, New York, I think will be best. But yeah, what's the the risk management? Because if I expose the account for more than ten pips, I will be doing like fifty fifty. That will be like yeah, really risky. Yeah, because it's very important that if. If you don't, for anyone that comes in for the trade cover, then they don't adjust the risk settings, then yeah, you're gonna wipe out your whole account. It don't matter because if you if you can't match thirty thousand what I'm doing, then even even if someone comes in with ten thousand, and I and and I decide to go five standards, they could lose five thousand right away. Yeah. So they could. So if someone had ten thousand. And I open up by standards, and they're losing a lot more. So, if for someone, like I say, if someone is that that serious and they come in with that kind of money, then I'm t I have to take a step back from opening five standards. So, yeah. so. Never, yeah, but, but the the ten pips days is different from uh, the copy trading because he, I cannot compare that with that, of course, because you just aim for one position. And 10 pips you, you, you seen those uh, uh, I, I'm sure you've seen those pictures with um, uh, compounding 10 pips a day yeah but what is the a good risk management of that how would you do it for because you just need one trade a day if you just if you're just shooting for um, just for 10 pips I mean, yeah, one pair can make you 10 pips. I mean, you can see how many pips euro in, in the pound has gone up. And you can see how many pips uh, USD CAD and USD Swiss Franks been dropping. 
And so, I don't know, 10 tips. I mean, a lot of people say shoot for 10 tips a day or shoot for, what else? What, is, what I hear the most, okay. What I hear the most is you could shoot for 3% a day or shoot for 2% a day. I don't believe in that because that's not a profit margin that, that you're shooting for. So my, my mentality behind that is to shoot for $300 a day or $500 a day because then I know that by the end of the week, I'll either have, I'll either have $1,500 by the end of the week or I'll have $2,000 by the end of the week because I'm training from Monday through Friday. I was five days. So I know, so now I know how much I'm shooting for per day and per week. And that becomes my weekly paycheck. I do not, I do not leave my profit in that account. I take it out. I transfer it over to a different account at the end of the week, regardless of what I make. It could be, it could be only a hundred bucks or it could be a thousand dollars. But that's still money that I made for the week. So and everything extra you will keep on the account. Right. So you just keep you just keep what you just uh you keep what you made. You keep your your principal. You keep your your initial deposit in there. And that's very important. So not everybody not not everybody is doing that because Either they're trying to build the account up to a certain a certain account balance, or they're just trying to flip it and see how much they can flip it to, but they don't have a precise financial goal behind that. So whether whether it's me doing the trade copier or trading on my live accounts, like I'm constantly shooting for something. I'm constantly having a, a goal. For, for whatever the profit is. Yeah. Because a lot of people come to me, they're like, man, how much can I really make? And a lot of people, a lot of people look at it in tips. And I says, well, I mean, if you read, if you read my book, I, I say that profit versus pips, that chapter, I talk a lot about why profit is more important because that's going to pay your bills. So, when that becomes, like I said, when that becomes your income, then you don't want to lose your income. And you don't want to, and you always want to make sure that you have something backed up. So when you build an account, go build another account so that you can do whatever you want with that other account. And then you build another one and you can keep building another one. I have 18 live accounts, so I know what I can, I know what I'm working on and I know what needs to be worked on. Yeah. So not every live account is at the is at the account balance I need it to be, but there's but there's six of them that are at, are at a pretty high balance right now. So I got twelve more to work on. So this, so the, but that's just that's just that's just on me. You you wanna uh, I mean how do I wanna say this um you wanna build a portfolio of forex accounts, not just one. Because when you build, when you when you rely on one account to make money for you, that means that you can either blow the account and get really aggressive one day and lose it all, or or uh, what's the other word? Um, or or you might end up being with a broker that you can't even withdraw money out of. Yeah. And yeah, so, I, I have three. Uh... Three accounts, just one I swing on, one I uh, scalp, and one I do the news trade on. So, but I want another one to, uh, for the, the 10 pips uh, challenge. You know, that's, well, yeah, I'm, I'm just really curious about doing it, but then just getting struck. I, I'm trying it on a demo account now a, a lot. Yeah. Just, just to see how it uh, packs out because your um, risk stays the same every day because right. you comp you're compounding. So you keep increasing the lot size every day. But the thing is, I don't know what's the correct risk management for it. Well, how much will I expose to lose or whatever? I 
Are you talking about just training for yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, for training for yourself. Just for ten tips. If you shoot for ten tips, then you need to cut. Then then you're gonna cut yourself. Then you yeah. I don't want to, yeah. Okay. You shoot for ten pips, then you just need to cut yourself off the signals. That means you need. That means you just. Do you need whatever I send out for signals? You shouldn't, you shouldn't be taking it. Yeah, of course, because it will go deeper. Right. Because yeah. that means you, you, you're shooting for more for more than ten pips. Yeah, of course, but this is just one account I want to try with with just the 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 compound uh, for the thirty days. If you want to compound 10 pips, open 10 positions and have 10 positions shoot for 10 pips. And that's 100 pips total. But what if it goes that way? <laughs> then, you, then you lose those 10 positions. But, but, but I talk about compounding because a lot of people say, I just want to do one position and try and make 10, try and make five pips or try and make three pips because they're talking about scalping. I'm like, yeah. yeah, you can do that. You can do that. But I said what's 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 what was much more better to do if you if you can do this, and this is what I've been doing since the, since I've been live trading, is that whether I was scalping or 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 swinging, I mean I was constantly adding trades back to back, and so. If I was buying UJ, I put 10, 10, 15 positions. And so, but not everybody's willing to put 10, 15 positions right away. Yeah. Because they're afraid, they're not, they're afraid or they think that it's not going to go the way that's going to go. So they only put one position. And then when that one position makes so much money, guess what people do? They put more positions and then all of a sudden it retraces and then. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's not a good idea. So when you can compound, I mean, you can compound pips. I mean, you just gotta open up more positions, and you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna make you're gonna make more than ten pips, and whatever the ten pips is, you have to really define a, a daily profit goal, a weekly profit goal. And that turns into your monthly profit. And then by the end of the year, in 12 months, you know, in 12 months, what, what do you want that to be? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just more that I saw the pictures that I want to challenge because I want to do a multi, multiple accounts. Just I want to have one swing, uh, one scalp, one just for the news, and then one with the compound and see how far I can bring it. So. I just had it in my mind, so I was just curious about it, and uh, if it if it's even yeah worth it. Uh, yeah, it it just looks good on the picture. I'm sure you've seen the picture with the compound ten, and uh, you see what it ends to. I was like, okay, yeah. Sounds yeah. Easy. And it's how do I don't say it? It's. Uh... Hmm, I don't want to say this. It's I I feel like I'm just repeating myself. That's why I'm trying to reword this. Uh when like I said, it don't matter how much you put in the account. Ten dollars can be fifty bucks, a hundred bucks, a thousand, five thousand. When you put whatever the amount is in there, then you should dive. You gotta look and say, okay, I'll put fifty bucks in. How much can I really make? And then, and then you shoot for really high because 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 I know a lot of people want to take fifty bucks to five hundred or fifty bucks to a thousand. So then you have a really high goal that you're shooting for, and then. And then shoot, and then shoot yourself back down. And say, okay, I need to be realistic. How much can I really make with fifty bucks? When you, so you take the highest goal and the lowest goal, the realistic goal of making money with fifty dollars, and then 
and then and then the shooting to the moon goal pretty much like a, an unrealistic goal that, that can't be achieved but it can it just takes time to get there so if you want to shoot 50 bucks to to 5,000 in one week can it be done it can it's gonna take a lot of time a lot of time yeah you know, it's, it's gonna require a lot of scalping and and a lot of open positions a lot of compounding but if you be realistic you say you know i can't okay so i don't want to make five thousand with fifty dollars for the week but i'll be realistic and say you know i'll shoot for 500. so now you know that from 500 to five thousand you have a a you have two goals right your realistic goal and the one that you're trying to like really flip to or you're trying to be you know you're trying to shoot for the moon and then yeah. from there from there now you're going to start working towards that you're going to start working towards that it has nothing to do with pips now 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 you have a financial goal set for the lowest and the highest this is something that i learned from sales and marketing because in sales you have to meet quotas in sales you have to meet a certain criteria of selling could be cars selling cars you got to sell 10 cars a month can you sell 10 cars a month? Yes, you can. If you be realistic, you can probably sell 10 cars in one day if you are really aggressive at selling. So this relates back, like I said, how do I want to say this? Forex trading relates back to sales and marketing and everything else, business in general. Right? You gotta know your risk management, you gotta know your account management, you gotta know how much you want to make, how much you're willing to lose. Uh, what else? How, many, how much you want to put in? How many hours you want to spend in trading every day? I mean, this is the same thing. It, and and, and what, what I learned from sales, I just put in here. I know this is like a, the whole, I mean, this is like a different approach, but it's the same approach to everything else. And it, like I said, it, it, back when, back when, if I'm doing sales, if I'm trying to sell cars, right? And and in one week, can I sell 10 cars in one week? If I can't, then I'll try and shoot four or five cars a week. Now I have a range. Can I then now I'm shooting for five cars a week? Because I know that if I make five cars a week, if I sell five cars a week, then I know I can get to 10 cars a week. So you're building, you're building your I don't want to say this. You're building yourself not just to be more confident but to be to be the most experienced trader for yourself so it's uh i don't know it's it's just a i know it's just an example but there's plenty of examples to to look at to look at um uh, 10 pips a day or or uh 100 bucks a day it goes back to sales and marketing. Yeah, most of the time when I see when I say pips, I will calculate it because it's not hard to calculate my most of the if you know blood size. But this this was just yeah, just like I said, pure the the pips, just ten pips a day, compound to ten pips, and that's it. Yeah, it was just yeah, the idea more. Yeah, because if. Yeah, because if um, if you yeah, I'm just repeating the same thing. So I'm trying to think of different words to say, but I'm just gonna be repeating the same thing. So if if you know this is the target that you want, then you then then you should stop shooting for a higher target if you make ten tips a day. It's not hard to get ten tips. You could you could have made ten tips in the first hour of New York sessions. You could have made 10 pips within the first hour of Tokyo or within the first hour of London because it's really, really volatile. Yeah. It's a volatile market, so you can catch. The first hour of each session is so volatile. I don't talk about Sydney because the spread is so high. But the first hour of Tokyo, the first hour of London, and the first hour of New York, if you can catch 10 pips for those, for those three sessions, that's 30 pips a day now. Yeah. So now I'm breaking it down per session. Or you can catch 10 pips every hour. 
if you break it down 24 hours, 10 times 24, that's 240 pips a day now. Yeah. So you can catch 10 pips for the day, you can catch 10 pips uh, every hour, or you can catch 10 pips for, or for, uh, for each session. Now you know, if I catch 10 pips per hour for 24 hours, that's 240 pips a day. Times, times five days, that's over 1,000 pips. It is not hard. People say it's so hard to catch a thousand pips in one week. It's not hard. If you're scalping back to back each session, you can make more than a thousand pips scalping. Same thing like if when people say that they can't make 10 pips swinging, yeah, you can. What I just said before, put 10, 15 positions and those 10, 15 positions or 20 positions or 30 positions catching 10 pips or more, take 30 positions times 10 pips you know that's 300 pips already on the on a swing trade stacking on a trend yeah and so i don't think i don't think i have talked a little bit in depth about this about this part you know uh about about uh compounding pips and everything but i'm breaking down a basic math structure for you you can catch 10 yeah. pips a day or you can catch 10 pips for New York, 10, pi 10 pips for London, and then 10 pips for Tokyo. So that's 30 pips for, that, for those three sessions. And if you want to catch 10 pips per hour, that's 240 pips for the whole 24 hours. Yeah, but then, then, then my, my question is, if, if let's, let's say you do like, uh, at, just at the opening of London and New York, you just do 10 pips. That's... that's Let's say this will be your goal. But the risk management of those 10 pips, that's what, I, what got me worried. How much are you willing to lose to, to win 10 pips? What are you going to do? It don't matter what the amount is. It could be 10 bucks. Let, let's say you do 100, 100, 100, uh, $100. Right, because then now it comes down to lot size. Yeah, so you probably would put a... a an, uh, Three. To me, I don't care if it's ten bucks, fifty bucks, or ten dollars. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do point one zero, which is one mini lot. Yeah. And, and on thousands, way, you would do a, a zero dot ten. Right. Right, but the, but that's me because yeah because I'm trying to make more profit. I don't care about the pips. I'm trying to make more profit. Yeah. Okay. But how, but there's a difference. There's a difference. People say 10 pips, but then if someone says that I made a thousand pips going 0 0.01 for the whole week, that's only a hundred dollars. 0 0.01 yeah. times a thousand pips. That's, that's a hundred dollars. Now, if someone says I made a thousand pips doing one standard lot, that's 10 grand. That's 10 yeah. thousand for the week. Yeah. So that's total difference. When someone says they're catching pips, I say, no, show me your lot size. I always tell them that. I always tell people that. Show me how much are you risking your account on your lot sizes because then I'll, then I'll know how much where, you, where your profit's at. Yeah, true. But it will also, on pips though, you can also see uh, how impressive it is. Let's say if somebody does it with uh, 10 lot size, he made 1,000. It's it's less impressive if somebody did it with like ten with uh, one lot size and uh, he made also one thousand. Yeah, because you know you got it. You got to put down the lot size, and then now you got yeah. the pips. So with whatever what pips you're shooting, whatever the lot size is, now what what is different when people don't understand when they do math is I said great, I said I'm gonna do I'm gonna do fifty open positions at the same lot size catching 10 pips and do the math yeah you know then that's when i start compounding if you understand if you understand business then you understand compounding same thing in sales and marketing we are compounding we are compounding our sales or our growth our growth potential that's your growth potential you want to be exponential not linear so i'm going back to some some math here but Linear is just like a, a steady pace, right? But exponential, you're growing like rapidly. Like instead of yeah. adding, right? Instead of adding, what if you can multiply? 
your profit? What if you can multiply your profit in trading? That's what I'm looking at in trading. I'm not looking at adding, where I, I know I say I add positions, but I'm trying to multiply my profit. Yeah. And so that's why I talk about compounding a lot than just saying I'm trying to shoot. I'm not, because you've been with me for a while now. So, so I don't talk about five tips a day or, yeah, no, you always say uh, profit. Yeah. yeah, I don't talk about that. I talk about profit and yeah. I talk about compounding a lot. Yeah. Because if you were if you if you own the bank, do you just want one customer or do you want a hundred customers? Yeah, of course, hundred. Right, you want a hundred customers, right? So what if you could take hundred customers and compound their customers as referrals, right? And get yeah. them to come be part of your bank. Now you got you need to take a hundred customers times a hundred, right? Now you got ten thousand members coming in and they're part of your bank. Well, you can take ten thousand times another ten thousand, right? You're exposing. I'm just talking about sales now, but you're exposing enough people to get people. Yeah. Same, thing with, same thing with trading. You're 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 risking a lot to make a lot, but when you make a lot, then you know that you can make more and more and more. But you know that. Not, not every day you're going to make a lot and not every day you're going to compound. But you know that you'll get there if you rapidly grow. And so I know it's kind of like sound like high risk aggressive. But in business, it's, it, it, that's where it's at. Aggressive, aggressive growth, um, exponential growth. Uh, I mean, making the most sales. Okay, okay, it's okay. Move it, girl. Here, take my phone. Take daddy's phone, here. Don't open new positions. <laughs> yeah, so, no, 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 it's my, it's my, hopefully she doesn't, but, but I mean, I mean, it, it's, everything that I'm saying about Forex goes back to my experience from sales, marketing, and, and now, now Forex is my business. Now I'm looking at a business standpoint. And so, so you, everyone has different financial targets and everyone has different uh, ways of making that kind of money. And yeah. it, uh, I don't, I like I said, I don't know. I don't know what exactly you're, you're trying to do. Like, I know you have some. I know you have some different strategies that you want to do, and I know you have some different methods and financial plans. But everyone's financial plan for forex is totally different. Yeah, yeah. Just like I said, I just have like swing. Uh, what did I say? A swing news scalp, and uh, yeah. And just this came in my mind. The ten pips a day. I want to add it up on a just a separate account. And, uh, of course, basically, the swing is the most important. That will give you freedom, you know. Otherwise, you will be uh, locked on your laptop. But I want to be able to scalp as well. Just be able to do it. Yeah, I know what you're saying. You have those da days that you're like, yeah, I'm just going to scalp the whole day. You, you can just do it without blowing your account and stuff. Yeah. So, and I yeah. think it's... It's a good way, it will improve your way you're looking at swing trades as well, if you know how to scalp. It just gives you a better, wider view on the, on, on the market. Yeah, and, and like you said, like I started scalping a lot last year because that's what I wanted to do. I didn't care about swinging. And yeah. When I, when I, when I, oh, what's that word? What's that word? When how do I say this? when I made the shift and transferred myself over to learn to swing, I made money swinging than scalping. Yeah. And and because because I always wanted to compound my trades, but when I compound when I scalp don't work out that well because I'm just shooting for five, five, six pips or maybe 10 pips when I'm scalping. So it's not even worth it. Now, if I'm compounding my trades when I'm swinging, 
then I know I'm shooting for more than 10 pips. I'm shooting for at least 100 pips when I'm swinging. Yeah, yeah, of course, with the swing, yeah, it will, it will be stupid to just stand uh, pips. Yeah, right. It'd be, it'd be stupid just to shoot for, you know, five, ten pips when you're swinging. It makes no sense that you're not swinging anymore. Yeah. So I was like, man, I was like, I was like, what if I could catch a hundred pips for euro, a hundred pips for the pound, a hundred pips for gold, a hundred pips for UJ, a hundred pips for USD CAD, a hundred pips for USD Swiss Spring. That's seven pairs right now. What if I catch another 100 pips on, on, on the US dollar? So that's 800 pips. That's 800 pips, right? But it's 100 pips per, per currency. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to stack 10 positions for each currency. Now I have 80 open positions. Take that and times 100 pips. It's crazy. That's 8,000 pips now because you're on eight different currency pairs. Yeah. And people can't believe that, but it, it's it's doable. It's doable. If I can do 8,000 pips with eight pairs and swing trade for the whole week, anybody can do it. Eight, uh, that's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, right? It is crazy, right? Because if we broke it down. You, if you catch 10 pips, right? If you catch 10 pips uh, for, for, for the whole day, which is 24 hours, 10 pips times 240, on, on one currency pair, which is UJ or Euro, because they're the lowest spreads pairs. That's 240 pips times five days. That's over a thousand pips already on one pair. Take that and 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 I like I said I give out signals on eight pairs. So that's eight thousand pips if you were if you were swinging for that long for the whole week. Yeah. There's no there's no excuses when people say they ain't catching pips. And that's why that's on like I'm like, yeah, there are times you can take losses. And there are times that you want to scalp, you can scalp on your own. But, I mean, that's that's already a given factor, how many pips you can catch in, oh. in one week. I mean, if you if you take it down and count the pips, it's crazy. Yeah. But everybody's account is different, so I don't know what your lot size is. So it comes down to what your profit is now. Yeah, yeah, I mostly just use... Uh... Uh, zero dot ten. Okay, so you okay, so you're always doing the mini lots. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but if I will be stacking eighty positions, I will probably have to bring the lot size down, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, not now. Now you're understanding. I mean, I I know I didn't talk about a lot about pips, but for for but for me breaking it down like that per currency pair. Per trade, per hour, per day. I mean, I mean, you get to see that if you just shoot for ten pips a day, you can do it on one pair. Now, yeah. if you shot, if you did it for eight pairs, now you got eighty pips, and is you just keep adding those pips because if you were trading ten pairs and you catching ten pips each, I mean, that's you know that's a hundred pips right there, and so. Yeah. I mean, you guys seen the snapshots? I mean, I'm trading all the all the major pairs because that's what I'm looking for. I don't care about catching, like I said, to me, I don't care about catching ten pips because I care. I care about making my money, and that's profit. Some people can go negative, can catch negative pips. Uh, that's that's not a good way of doing it. But I mean, you 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 have to be. Like for me, like I said, I got really precise on my financial goals about making making three hundred dollars a day, making five hundred dollars a day, or making a thousand dollars a day. I got really serious on financial goals. Then you take it more serious on how much money you're gonna make because then that becomes your income. And then if you wanna leave your job, make sure that you're you're having at least I wanna say at least I don't want to say six months, but some some traders say if you have six months of consistent profit, then you should, then you can quit your job. I don't believe in that because you gotta have at least one full year of some kind of consistency in the markets before before you can say you're gonna quit your job. Yeah. Last year is totally different from this year. We didn't have trade wars last year. This is a totally different game changer. Now we got President Trump doing crazy things now. 
you know, and so you got a new president. He, I mean, when I when I came into live trading, when I got into live trading January last year, yes, Trump, Trump, Trump didn't get inaugurated till the 16th of January, but I was live trading on right after uh, right after New Year's, and I was like. I was like, I wonder what happens when Trump becomes president. Well, the dollar, the dollar was on a sell. I didn't know that. I thought the dollar was a buy because Trump said he's gonna bring business back. So, thing like I said, you you learn so much along the way. You're like, oh man, last year's not gonna be like this year. This year, like I said, this year is all about trade wars. This the trade war started at the end of tax season. And trade war is still going to probably keep going until probably before tax season of next year. Whatever happened, like I said, I mean, what I'm, I'm now I'm diving back into a, a pattern, the pattern subject of force. Whatever happens during tax season runs through the whole end of the year. It's just, it's just how how I saw it last year. This is what I'm seeing again. Something major happens, but. But even like beginning of this year, though it was the dollar was really increasing, and now you see it's it's gonna no yeah it was increasing now you see it's going down. Yeah 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 it it, it finally picked up uh, at the beginning of the year because they dropped it for a whole year. Yeah yeah. Look at the monthly chart; it's crazy. And then and then yeah, it picked up picked up back in February, and then. We come into the month of September now. It's going back down. Thank you. Check the monthly check. Yeah. So, but I mean, yeah. Back back to uh, having a financial goal, and if you, if you want to shoot for ten pips a day, you can you can make ten pips a day. That's that's no that's that's not hard. That's the problem is that people when they make ten pips, guess what they do? They try to make more pips. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's why I got like the separate account. I just want on one account. I would just keep the 10 pips when I have it. I would just put the stop loss under it on the 10 pips. And then I don't mind to let it go or so. And just on the yeah. other swing, it would just take a longer. Yeah, because, because the, the, the important thing is that if, if you're only just shooting for 10 pips a day, then, then then you shouldn't be yeah then you shouldn't be you shouldn't be taking my signals and, and you're just you you I mean you you're basically just slowly building the account. And yeah, with that with with that uh, with just with that account, I I wouldn't know because it's just ten pips. That will be a scalp. Yeah, but it's not that. That's just one small account. You know that's. I want to do it with with hundred uh, euros. Yeah, so ten pips could be you know if you're gonna do point one zero, you make was that ten bucks? It's ten ten euros. Yeah, ten dollars. So ten dollars a day. So it's fifty bucks a week. Yeah, but you, you but let, let me show you the, the picture. Oh. What? Uh, uh, you take my phone, girl. Here. Not sure if I. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Show me. Let me get back. Oh no. Mm, wait, this is the wrong. See the picture like a lot, and now I'm looking for the, that one. Come on. Oh, 
Uh, start balance, patient remains. On the sheet. Mm, I'm looking for the right one because I'm like I see a lot of uh, sheets with the compound.